first I would like to thank organizers uh, for the invitation and also special thanks to make it possible um, a pre-recorded talk. Uh, based on my situation, it was more convenient for me. So let me share my slides with you. Okay. So the title of my talk is uh, Partial Derivatives of the Hankel Determinant and its Degenerations. And during the talk, I can um, explain that why partial derivatives and why Hankel Determinant and its Degenerations. This is based on a joint work with Ray Nelikunia, Zako Ramos, and Aaron Simis. This work is already in archive. Okay, so first let me start from the plan of my talk. I can start from the motivation and after that definitions and some classical cases of studies and uh, also some results and an approach of some proofs, depends on the time. And the question that is still open for us. So let me start from the definition. Suppose that um, we have a polynomial f and a polynomial ring r over a field k. Here k is a field of characteristic zero because we are working with uh, partial derivatives. So um, just from the beginning when we are uh, working with partial derivatives, the coefficients become out of our control. So just it was a reminder. And uh, we consider the partial derivatives of this polynomial. Of course, you can look at this um, partial derivatives as an ideal of a ground ring, but also you can look at them as a coordinate of a polar map. So they can define a rational map from pn to pn. And under the condition that this polar map become a criminal map, or I mean the birational map from pn to pn, we call f a homoloidal polynomial. Sometimes we refer to the corresponding hypersurfaces and we say that, okay, the hypersurface defined by f is a homoloidal hypersurface. Okay, because of this, we are interested, we are interested to uh, study the partial derivatives. Um, but what is important of the homoloidal polynomial, actually, this is based on the work of the Dolkachev in 2000 that he has classified all of the homoloidal curves which are reduced in the plane case. And uh, he classified them in these three classes and considering the degree also. So, um, Mm, but for the higher dimension, when we consider, for example, in P3, P3, P4, etc., it is poorly known the classification for homoloidal polynomials. There are some uh, works, very fundamental works, actually have uh, have been done. In the case of the F, is the product of the linear forms, but in general, no, we don't have any classification. So. Um, we were interested to work, okay, let's uh, work on homolaid, a polynomial in higher dimension. But instead of uh, considering a polynomial in general case, we were thinking that, okay, let's now consider a polynomial that is uh, has more a structural form. What does the structure mean? Maybe the subject uh, seems a bit foggy structure. But um, the idea was that, okay, let's consider polynomials that they are coming from the matrices. So when we are working with the gradient ideals, in this sense, so um, we can use lots of information from determinantal ideals. Uh, because of this, uh, we consider that, okay, let's consider the homoloidal properties, but for the matrices. Historical cases that was known was, for example, when we consider a generic square matrix. If you consider the determinant of a generic square matrix, this polynomial is homoloidal. And if you consider the uh, generic symmetric matrix, 
and consider f as the determinant of a generic symmetric matrix, again, this polynomial also is homoidal. So the next question that naturally arises for us is, OK, let's see and uh, uh, answer this question for the S-square Hankel matrices. Why Hankel matrices? Hankel matrices actually are classical um, matrices, maybe uh, not that well known as the generic matrix and symmetric matrix, but they have lots of interesting properties uh, to be considered. Uh, they are linear sections of the uh, generic matrices and they have the property that they are one generic in the sense that, okay, one generic, it means that if you consider any linear combinations of two rows or any linear combinations of the columns, and after doing all of these operations, we don't get any zero entries. Okay, because of this, we get interested to Hankel matrices. What is the Hankel matrix? Okay, let me define this matrix for you. Okay, the generic Hankel matrix in the arbitrary size of R by S is in this form. If you look at this matrix, you can see that this is a supersymmetric matrix, or it's better to say that this is anti-diagonal matrix in the sense that all of the variables and the anti-diagonal are the same variables. Okay. Um, one of the good properties that for the first time was proved by Gerson Peskin is that this kind of matrices has a good property that I say they have this property of elasticity. Or what does it mean? It means that when we are working with the determinantal ideal of this matrix, I mean IT, it means that uh, all of the T by T minors the ideal of the generated by all of the t by t minors of this matrix of the size of r by s, this is exactly equal to the ideal of minors of the size t. Of the Hankel matrix, this time with the size t by n. And it doesn't matter as far as you keep this equality or as far as you keep the number of the variables, you can change the size of the matrix and working with determinantal ideals will be the same idea for you. Okay, what are the advantage? So we get two advantages. One of them is that we always, we can work with maximum minors. We can change the size of the matrix up to get the maximum one. And the other is that when we are working with the minimal number of generators, we have it always at hand. And it is exactly interesting. So, but because we wanted to study the homoloidal property, so we need to work with the square one, the square Hankel matrix. So let me set up our notations. Um, so suppose that HM is the Hankel matrix of the size M, it's the square one. Okay, so we have X1 to X2M minus one uh, variables. So consider F as a determinant of this matrix and R as the polynomial ring over these variables in the terminates, actually. So consider the gradient ideal of this polynomial. So the first thing is that, um, the first difference actually from the generic and symmetric generic one is that, in the generic one, in the symmetric generic, when we are working with the partial derivatives, the partial derivatives are exactly cofactors of the matrix. But when we are working with the Hankel matrix, they are not exactly cofactors or submaximal minors. They are a linear combination of submaximal minors. And so in this case, uh, we can say that, okay, the gradient ideal is a um, is, an, is a sub ideal actually of the sub maximal minus, but we can use the property of the Hankel and stretch this matrix, this square matrix, to the matrix of the size m minus one and m plus one. And instead of working with sub maximal minors, we can work with the maximum minors of size m minus one. And we did it. Okay. 
let's see so uh, in this sense uh, one can consider the generic matrix of the same size m minus one and plus one and consider the Hankel matrix of the same size. And we consider the corresponding polynomial rings in terms of the variables of the generic matrix and the Hankel matrix and consider the specializations. So we get the surjectivity from this polynomial ring to the another polynomial ring, of course, given by this uh, specialization. But moreover, we get interested to work with uh, subalgebra of these polynomials instead of the polynomials itself. So we consider the subalgebra of the maximal minors of the generic matrix, or you can consider it as a fiber cone of this determinantal ideal over the generic matrix. And also you can consider the special fiber of the determinantal ideal of the same size of the Hankel matrix. So both of them are some algebras of maximal minus of these two corresponding um, matrices. When we consider these two subalgebras instead of the two polynomials, uh, because they are equigenerated, again, by the same specialization, we can define a subjectivity between these two fiber cones. When we define these two fiber cones, we can consider that, okay, we have this surjectivity between these two algebras, but remember that actually this algebra is the coordinate ring of the Grassmannian of M minus one and plus one. And uh, it is well known that the dimension of this Grassmannian of this size is exactly two M minus one. And in the other side, we could, and also it was known, but we could uh, prove it in general that the dimension of this fiber cone is the maximal, uh, uh, is the maximal possible one. It's, it's exactly equal to the dimension of the base ring, and it is exactly uh, uh, it has exactly dimension two and minus one. I mean that they, they, these two algebras have same dimension. Uh, they are domain, we have such activity between them. So, but it was a bit slightly surprising result that we get that, okay. So the coordinate ring of Grassmannian in this sense become isomorphism to the special fiber of submaximal minors of the high club. So it means that we, sh we show that in general case that this ideal has maximal analytic spread that it was the dimension of the fiber cone, the subalgebra that we have considered, and we get the isomorphism between the Grossmannian and in this case between the special fibers of the terminal ideal of a angle of size M minus one. What does it mean? Uh, it means that in this sense, just for this size, but the size of M minus one, the relation between the generators are polyclear relation. We know that in general, by work of Konka, the relation between the determinantal ideal of Hankel matrices are polyclear, and there exists another relation that they are still a quadratic one, but um, another relation, it's not just the polyclear one. But in this special case, when we're working with this size of matrix, uh, M minus one, yes, we have just polyclear relation. So interesting, it is actually be, uh, will give us opportunity uh, to study the homoidalness of the determinant um, easier, okay, in an easier case. So, let me continue. The first uh, mm, result actually that um, was a special for the case of generic Hankel matrix, it was thus. Consider that delta denoted the ideal of the size, uh, uh, the ideal of all of the mm, minors of the size of M minus one of the Hankel square Hankel. So we have this 
property between these algebras. The algebra defined by Cartesian ideals is a subalgebra defined by the submaximal minors, and also these are the subalgebra of the uh, all of the monomials of the game minus one. So the first thing that we could show is that if we look at to the fiber cone here, and we consider these two ideals, the gradient ideals and the determinantal ideal, instead of uh, in polynomial ring, just look at it in the fiber cone, they are the same up to a radical. What does it mean? When we have this property, it means that we don't have just inclusion. Actually, we can say that, okay, we have an integral extension of this uh, special fiber over the algebra defined by the partial derivatives. Of course, when we have integral extension, they will get the same dimension. We know that what is the dimension of this algebra as we have the maximal analytic spread, it is exactly two and minus one. So interesting. So um, another interesting point is that the number of partial derivatives exactly is equal to 2m minus 1, and it is exactly the dimension of this algebra. So what we get is that, OK, so the Hessian must be non-zero when we consider the polynomial IF. We know that the rank of Hessian is exactly equal to the dimension of the algebra defined by the gradient ideal. So when this algebra has the uh, maximal rank, it is 2 and minus 1. So it means that this determinant of Hessian won't be 0 identically. So we have non vanishing Hessian. Of course, non vanishing Hessian is equivalent to say that, okay, all the partial derivatives of this polynomial are algebraically independent. It is equivalent to say that, okay, the polar map that we have considered from the beginning defined by F must be dominant. Good, it was the necessary condition for having the homoloidal polynomial, for having a birationality, we need dominancy. Okay, by now, we could find half of the way. But let's continue. After that, actually, we consider that, okay, um, by the isomorphism between the coordinate ring of the Grassmannian and this special fiber. And of course, well known results by Huckestar, for example, we know that the coordinate rings of Grassmannians are um, Quem Macaulay, by the work of someone, they are UFT. So by the theorem of Morty, they are Gornstein. So we have the Gornstein S and unique factorization domain. And when we consider um, the Hilbert series, of this special fibers, when we are looking at to as the uh, uh, rational function, we know that the, the degree of the numerator uh, is exactly equal to the uh, regularity. And it is done when we are using the A invariant as a degree of the a rational function of the Hilbert series of this special fiber, but in this case, using the Grassmannian, and we use that, okay, so the regularity of this algebra must be exactly m minus two. And what else? And also, because of this kind of property and the integral extension, um, the integral extension of these algebras and that the partial derivatives are algebraically independent. So we can look at this algebra as a polynomial ring, and it is actually the notar normalization. And finally, by all of this property, uh, we could across to the fact that F is not homoidal. It cannot be homoidal because if we get the homoloidalness by this inclusion, it means that all of these um, minors must be integral over this polynomial ring, but this is integrally closed. What does it mean? It means that this, uh, all of these minors 
must be partial derivatives, but it is not. It is not true. It is not the case. As soon as we get um, the size of the matrix bigger than three, we don't have this property. So f is not homolytic. I would like to mention that actually non homolytic of f was obtained by Nivaldo Medeiro and one of his uh, PhD students. And uh, they have mentioned us that also uh, they established that f is not homolytic, but by, uh, by a geometric argument also. So, um, the determinant uh, of Hanke matrices in contrast to the uh, classical cases is not homoidal, but has lots of good properties. For example, uh, we could find that, okay, the gradient ideal in this case is exactly a minimal reduction of the determinantal ideal of size m minus one. And even better than this, we could show that, okay, the reduction number of this determinantal ideal is exactly n minus two. Sorry, just let me. This is exactly n minus two. And the gradient ideal is one of that minimal reductions that accept this uh, reduction number and we get this equality. Okay, uh, so we get lots of good properties, but not homoidalness. Because of this, we were thinking that, okay, so what about the degenerations of the Hankel matrix? Okay, suppose that, uh, okay, so Hankel matrix is not homoidal, but if we degenerate it, uh, what would happen? Actually, if uh, we consider this remark that uh, when we have this regular sequence in that they are the last, the m minus two last variables in the uh, in the matrix of Hankel. This is a regular sequence over submaximal minors, and this is a regular sequence of uh, of lengths exactly m minus two. If we do this specialization, if we do this degeneration, so we get a matrix. Uh, that we, we call it sometimes sub maxim uh, sub uh, sub -hankel, or sometimes we just denote it by it uh, to say that okay we degenerate it with m minus two regular sequence which are the, exactly the last m minus two uh, variables so we get this matrix and let's study this matrix um, and the determinant of that um, does it define a homoidal polynomial and uh, we get yes. And how was the approach? Actually, one possible approach for the historical cases in the sense of the algebra is that uh, we know that the gradient ideal of determinant, which is exactly the cofactors ideals of the generic matrix of X and the generic symmetric matrix of S, um, have linear presentation. And by work of the Honecke, we know that these ideals are of linear time. And by work of the code self, we have this property exactly for the generic symmetric matrix also. So we get uh, lots of good property for these ideals, linear presentation and linear type property for the cofactors. Uh, we get almost uh, the same properties uh, for the sub Hankel matrix. I mean, for we say that for sub Hankel matrix, we say that the fully degeneration can be degenerated by all of this regular sequence. So it was the work that we have done 2016 that we could show that actually the gradient ideal of the determinant of this uh, matrix is exactly linear type. And also, the gradient ideal, actually we settled the, explicitly the free resolution of the gradient ideal, but for a specific attention, we just consider the presentation. In the presentation, we have exactly M linear syzygies. And M linear syzygies in this case um, 
uh, get us the maximal linear rank. What does the maximal linear rank means here? Uh, this is a definition that we are using uh, to detect the homolateness. And it means that you consider the presentation. In the matrix of presentation, you just consider the linear syzygies. Consider all of the linear syzygies as a submatrix of submatrix of presentation. If this linear part of presentation has maximal rank, we say that, okay, the corresponding IDO has maximal linear rank. Why these two notions are important? Um, because we're going to use a criterion that was done by Dori Hassan Zadeh in 2012. They settled that, okay, if we have the linear type property of an ideal, of an ideal of, of gradient ideal of a polynomial, so the homolateness is exactly equivalent to get a maximal possible rank for a linear syzygy. So we can decide about homolateness just by looking at the presentation in the presence of the linear type property. So that was true for the determinant of genetic matrix X. It was a classical one. That was true by, for the determinant of genetic symmetric matrices. And also by what we have done, it is true also for the fully degenerated um, matrix H, I mean the Heichel one. And because of this, these three, I can say that all of these three are homolateral. So nice. But what we can say about the other degenerations, if we don't degenerate in all of this regular sequence of length n minus two, which was exactly equal to the reduction number of the maximum minus, what happens? Okay. So because of this, we get started uh, to study the other degenerations. What does it mean? It means that, okay, let's just consider the last variable equal to zero. We say that, okay, R is equal to one. It means that HM of one. Or if we consider two zeros, regular sequence of lens one, zero, and regular sequence of lens two is equal to zero. So we put all of these variables, corresponding variables equal to zero. And in general, so consider that R is the number of the zeros that we are putting for the last variables up to the get the, the lens of the, this regular sequence, put it to zero and we consider this matrix, which is a degenerated of the Heinkel matrix. Are they homolidal? Which properties they preserve uh, from the generic Heinkel matrix or which properties they will lose? They will lose. Okay, so uh, we will we will see. So just let me set some notations here. And the ground polynomial ring will be different. Okay, because the number of uh, variables change, and uh, we consider the determinantal um, uh, rings. There's a quotient over these minors uh, of size t of corresponding uh, degenerated of Hankel matrix. And consider that the corresponding gradient ideal of this determinant denoted by this uh, notations. What we have actually, first, uh, uh, we could set all the minimal primes of this gradient ideal, I mean, this gradient ideal. And we observed that we have two minimal primes, actually. One of them are exactly submaximal minors, and the others comes from this uh, special monomial idea. So from this proposition, we will, uh, we see that, okay, we don't get lots of good properties. As soon as we do the degeneration, uh, we don't have any reduction property. We don't have any integral extension and um, from the algebras. So these good properties will disappear. And after that, 
uh, we understood that, okay, we know that the Henkel determinantal ideals, Henkel determinantal rings, actually, when we consider the generic case when R is equal to zero, is um, Cohen Macaulay and normal. But as soon as we do the degeneration, the Cohen Macaulay property preserved, by the, but the normality in general, no. So maybe it is uh, the point of interest for uh, uh, singularities. Uh, because, um, okay, uh, we know that the Cohen-Macaulinians and normality are good properties that rational singularities enjoys of this property. And it was done by a work, uh, joint work with Conca, Sink, and Barbaro that the Hankel determinantal ring, I mean, that when we just consider the generic case of the Hankel, the determinantal ring has rational singularities. And of course, they have Cohen Macaulay property and normality. But as soon as we do the generation, the generation, okay, we lose also this good property. So we lose the property of the reduction, we lose the property of the normality. But which properties are preserved by this degeneration? If we consider um, which properties are preserved as the Hankel one, one of them is that okay. Uh, by degeneration, still we have uh, maximal analytic spread for submaximal miners. We have Cohen Macaulay's that I have, we have seen, and we have the determinant of this square matrix after degeneration has non vanishing Hessian. It was very time consuming for us to show this. It was very, I, I think, uh, yeah. It was very um, calculation involved to show that, okay, the, the Hessian is not vanished identically in this case. And um, um, the importance was that, okay, so when um, we have this property, it means that, uh, again, the polar map defined by these polynomials is dominant, okay? The necessary condition, it's done here. Of course, it is equivalent to say that the number of the, the number of partial derivatives, all of these partial derivatives are algebraically independent. They are the same properties as the hand of one. But uh, uh, the question still remains. We don't have reduction. We don't have integral extension. We don't have this relation between the coordinate ring of Grassmannian and the uh, fiber cone of this ideal here. So arguing that if they are homoloidal or not, just get stuck here. And the question remains that, okay, when we degenerate, is still this polynomial defined homoloidal polynomial or not? And uh, what is our guess? Our guess is that just in the fully degeneration, when we just consider exactly m minus two regular sequence and we put all of them in zero, uh, which is number exactly was the reduction number of the gradient ideal, um, reduction number actually of the mass of maximal minors, um, we just get the homoloidal property. And before that, we don't have. And it is just still unknown for us. Um, the approach could be the same as we have done for the sub Hankel, but we couldn't show that they are of linear type. And um, the linear um, presentation also has no uh, maximal rank. So, um, but of course, maybe there exists another approach, maybe the geometer approaches to show that they are not homoloidal. Okay, it is our guess that they are not. Uh, thank you for your attention.